video games, like any other media, can really make change, can really impact our society, how we view the world around us. Games naturally challenge people with problems that they may not face in the real world, and they have to think about certain issues in ways they've never thought about them before. Live a day in, say, a homeless person's shoes within a simulation. It helps people understand that their outside view is not very well informed, and so they get a better perspective and they change perspective. If I wanted to get someone to understand what Games for Change is, I would get three of the best games, get them to play them for 10 minutes. You don't need more than that. When I came to the U.S. from Israel, I decided to create a game called Peacemaker, a simulation about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. You can actually broker peace between the two states. Many people said, it's crazy. Who is going to want to play a game about the Middle East? It got tons of press, as you can imagine, because what people knew about video games is games are the most horrible thing out there. In the game, never mind, you go inside the subconscious mind of uh, psychological trauma victims. Trauma can be so many different things. It has so many different faces, so many different stories. We want to have players walk away with maybe a better understanding and a little bit more empathy for what trauma might mean because it's something that a lot of people deal with but don't want to talk about. Half the sky. It's all about humanitarian issues. It's about women empowerment. And we don't want only to reach people in the U.S. We want to reach people in India. We want to affect people in Kenya. We raised more than half a million dollars for books and surgeries that go to NGOs, to people in countries. In Mind Light, the goal is to keep relaxed. This is the neurofeedback headset that it comes with. And there's one sensor right here at the front that is reading your brain waves. And the more relaxed you are, the bigger your mind light grows in the game. We have been trying to teach kids, if you change the way you think, then the world out there looks different. It's an incredibly powerful metaphor. Games are not only exciting for social change, they have some attributes that are really unique. They're interactive, you can make decisions, you can get the consequences. In a way, you pave your own way. I think the sense of a geek culture in games has actually evolved. There are more people making different games, and the diversity of play has changed as well. We are not, as a region, discussing our diversity, introducing the world into our environment and our home and our norm. So I wanted to build a space that allowed me to tell and highlight the diversity in the Arab world. It's important that we create queer characters in games. If you have a kid who's a girl or queer or a person of color and they're playing games and they don't see themselves being represented in those games, they're going to assume that those games aren't made for them. For the Never Alone Game Project, our youth aren't connecting to our culture and our history in the same way they always have. So we wanted to create that really gentle invitation for them to reconnect with their you know, traditional stories and their art forms. What I hope is to truly be a positive force in this world that allows individuals, no matter who they are, what they believe in, where they come from, you know, what sexual orientation they are, to better their life, to communicate with the world. You know, my dream is that one day will be like the film industry. It's obvious, you know, that you can make a very serious movie that deals with real world issues, but you can also be successful financially and get critical acclaim. That's what I want games to be.